I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. Business Matters is the HKM show focusing not only on businesses in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage those businesses. Today I have with me Kathy McDonald, the owner of a Lemur's Purse in Hopkinton. Kathy, thanks for, thanks for taking the time to, to chat with us. But you, you know, part of our, part of our goal is to, is to get people to talk a little bit about their backgrounds and then sort of lead into uh, what they're doing now. So I'm interested in, in uh, uh, because I think the connection would be, or maybe lack thereof connection, between your educational background and what you're doing with a Lehman's Purse. So why don't you start there? Okay, gives all those young children, young people trying to decide what to do for college, let them know that it's not always etched in stone what you exactly. go to college for. Exactly. So I went to school in Colorado, northern Colorado, and I graduated with a degree in social rehabilitation. Um, right now, I'm a business owner in Hopkinton doing retail. I'm also a pastor, um, which is where the Alima's Purse story started. So we were doing missions work, and we started um, primarily with an orphanage in Mozambique, Africa, northern Mozambique. And what I realized was that there was such great need. The need was something I had never seen before. I had never seen poverty the way I had seen poverty. Um, children living in dumps with no mom and dad, with just a shirt on their body and no one to care for them was something that, for me, just stunned me and I knew I couldn't sit back and let that go without taking some kind of action. Um, so what I did for four to five years was pray and ask God to give me a venue, some vehicle to help these people more than I was helping them, just going back and forth bringing supplies over to them. Uh, when Hurricane Irene hit, a friend of mine from Hopkinton, Katie Olson, sent me a link to a story about a woman in Lake Forest, Illinois, who had a shop where she sold goods that are called fair trade. Fair traders, um, basically products that are made by people in third world countries, sometimes second world countries, where the workers are protected and given a fair wage. Um, so this woman had a shop full of these things. And so I went out and spoke with her and decided that we should give this a try. My husband and I thought, Let's, let's invest in this, let's see what happens. Um, we named the shop after a young woman that I had met in Africa who, even though she was an orphan, she gave to me, she gave me a piece of candy. And I knew that no one had ever given to me that way before. No one had wow. given me in a way that cost them as opposed to giving out of abundance. So we decided that we would name the store after her and that we would follow in her footsteps and we would give everything away. So 100% of Alima's purse is profits go to those in extreme need, both in the United States and abroad. How many trips did you, uh, did you make to Africa? And, and, and how many students did, how many young people did you bring? Oh, that was the, probably the joy of our hearts when we brought young people. So um, we took two trips during Christmas where we took college and young people. So I think total we brought 30 to 35 young people over there with us. And one Christmas morning, we were bringing the gifts down to give to the children. and this young man that I had known since he was three years old looked at me and he said, Kathy, this is the first time in my life I've cared about anybody more than myself. Wow. And for me, that was worth going to Africa, you know, and the flight delays and things that happen as you travel around the world. So I actually just came back. My daughter was in school in, at the University of Cape Town. So actually, we've been back a month and we were up, back up in Mozambique. So it was really nice to be back. Well, the, 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 the difference between Cape Town and Mozambique must be Enormous. Uh, yes, yes. Cape, Cape Town is very affluent. They have a great university there, and that's where my daughter went. But she also, while she was there, um, just outside the city limits of Cape Town, things are more third world. So my daughter actually was volunteering while she was in college. She was volunteering at a safe house, teaching the women that had been rescued out of trafficking and prostitution, teaching them computer skills, English, things like that. These are enormous issues. I think it's pretty difficult to, to, for one to get their heads and hands around yeah. uh, around some of these issues that you deal with. You know, I, be, before we go on, because I want to want to drill down a little bit uh, relative to Lima's purse, but uh, I'm interested in uh, in what advice you might give young people who uh, fret and worry about what they're going to major in, uh, and then and then ultimately uh, might end up in a very, very different field? Um, 
I would say go with what gives you passion, what you, what you want to learn about. I know my husband is the same way. My husband has a wonderful job, and he came out of school with an um, international studies degree, which he's in business now. Um, so I think that a lot about education is life experience and what you learn from other people. Yes, you're schooling, but the situations that come up around you um, are just as important and are just as uh, fruitful to you later on in life. And I think ultimately, too, uh, th th what really matters, whatever area you study in, is to study and, and, and get good grades. And then that sort of positions you, doesn't it, for, for mm -hmm. other things. And you meet people. You meet people that can connect you. To, to things that, that later on might be where you end up and where you really see making a difference and changing the world. For me, that was really important. What was it like for you to uh, immerse yourself in establishing a retail business, which is, again, very different than your background? It was very different. So it was quite a learning experience, but having this woman in Lake Forest, Illinois, come alongside of me and vet her, her vendors, so to speak. So you buy from other people. That's what retail is. You buy from people and then you put them in your store. She already had a list of 25 to 30 vendors who were fair trade certified, who their products were excellent and sold in Lake Forest, which is a similar demographic to Hopkinton. So I, she basically took a huge chunk of learning that she had three years to learn in, you know, in, it took her three years to learn what she gave to me in, you know, one day. Power of networking, I guess. Wonderful, wonderful. And how, how did you make that connection? She had a news, newspaper story written about her in Chicago, and a friend, Katie Olson from Hopkinton, forwarded me the story and said, I think you would like this. Is she still in business? No, she, well, her store is still in business. So yep. she gave a percentage of her profits away. Um, and we've chosen to give 100%, so we give 100%. But her store is still in Lake Forest, Illinois, and they still give a percentage away. And so your operation in, in Hopkinton runs mm -hmm. out of, or is run out of? Water Fresh Farms Marketplace. So that, that connection um, allows you, I, I would think, con considerable flexibility. You didn't have to go looking for a storefront. Right. We, um, I went down to them about I think it was five or six days before they opened and spoke with them and told them what we were trying to do and for them they thought it was a natural fit. Um, so they invited us in and we are a vendor, we are a department in their store. The, pr the products that are sold, you yes. talked about, uh, I think you used the word certified? Um, certified fair trade. Tell me what that is. Certified fair trade is um, when it has been certified that the group of women or men that you are employing to make your product are given safe working conditions, are given proper salary and wage for what they're making. So for Waterfresh, when we started out, we just did fair trade, but Waterfresh is a very large store and people wanted United States products also. So what we did was we started looking for people in the United States who have small businesses and are trying to emerge. And they're usually artisans and incorporated them as well. So now we have probably a 75 fair trade, 25 US product in Waterfresh. Do, give me that again, what, what are the numbers? About 75 to 25%. That can fluctuate depending on yeah. the season what, and what we like, what we find that we like and we want to sell in the store. Who, determ who determines this qualification? There's a, actually a fair trade board. Getting fair, tr fair trade certified is very difficult, very difficult. So you had to learn about that. That's yes. a, that's a that's a, a governmental piece that you. That's an important that's an important piece, and there are, there are also people that are trying to become fair trade. So the the qualifications are very stringent for the fair trade certification. But we also know of companies that are trying to like they bought the land, they have a building for their workers, they're doing, you know, A, B, and C. They just need to get to D to get the certification. So there are a lot of people around the world doing great things and, and trying to protect workers so that they do get, they do get a, fair, a fair wage and they're protected in their work environment. So that immerses you, that, it, it, that then immerses you in a, in, in a whole different subject area, doesn't it? Yes. So you go with your background into the retail and now you have this certification thing that's, that's really critical. You have to learn about that. 
And then, and then, how do you make? How did you make contact with? Uh, is 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 it simple to make contact with these certified people? Um, yes, for for us, the thing at Waterfresh, we like we like to have different products. So, I think in many retail environments, many retail stores, they shop twice a year. They buy twice a year for their store: fall, winter, summer, spring. Yeah, and that's what's in their shop. For so from for fall and winter, they have the same set items. I. I just like it to be different. So we're constantly bringing in, I would say three times a month, we'll have a new product or two new products in from somewhere. Um, for example, when I was down in Cape Town with my daughter, I went to this, she brought me to this wonderful market that had fair trade women, women's groups who sold their goods. And one of them, they were so excited, they had only sold their product in the United States one other time. So we'll be bringing them in in August. And what they do is they take old cloth that's being discarded and make these beautiful stuffed animals that are amazing. So uh, it's things like that. Oh, it's, it's like looking a treasure hunt. You're always right, looking. Right. You're always looking to meet people and, uh, and see what, how you can help them and then using that money to then help others who are in more extreme need. Give me an example of uh, one of the products and then connect back to the people who produce the product. Okay, so for example, Starfish. Starfish is a company that helps women, employs women who have been freed and rescued from sex trafficking in Southeast Asia. So what they do is when they're rescued, they are given um, quite a bit of emotional help. Um, you know they need a lot of they need a lot of support when they come out, but they also need a way to support themselves. So Starfish teaches them how to make jewelry, um, and then from that point we buy from Starfish. Okay. So we buy jewelry from Starfish and sell it at Waterfresh. And you're and we you now have you've been in operation for how long? Almost four years. Four years, and you're. Producing, you're making, a, are making a profit. We are. We're, we're actually. Um, this has been the, the, from the beginning. This has been our dream: is that we would be able to really help people in extreme need around the world. At this point, we're getting ready to build a well in South Africa, um, northern South Africa. So it's a, on the other side. It's on the eastern side of South Africa um, at an orphanage. The orphanage has purchased macadamia trees. Mm. and planted 1,500 macadamia trees in hopes that they'll bear fruit and they'll be able to sustain the orphanage through the, through the macadamia. So what we're doing is we're building the water well for them, which will not only provide clean water for all, everyone at the orphanage, but it will also be able to be used to irrigate those trees. So it, it, secures, their, it secures their finance. Do you, sp do you spend time um, looking at global issues or does the issue come to you? Um, I would say I'm probably always praying for the thing that we're supposed to help, the people that we're supposed to help. That is, that is the number one thing I do. Um, and then they, they do come, come to us. Um, I was telling you about the couple in Framingham and their goal is to eradicate hunger in Framingham. So we've produced, we've given them 2,500 meals. We've given them the money to bake 2,500 meals for the children in Framingham that, that don't have food. And what they do is they go out twice a week to the projects in Framingham and give dinner away. And we were well, able to are, go out with Who them. are these people? David and Elisa Keys. They're down across from, they have a little restaurant across from the Loring Arena. And they go out, they have, what they've done is they've taken a, like an ice cream truck and they've fitted it with a grill. And so they, it's, it says Daniel's table and they go into the projects and the, the children just come running out to them because they've been so faithful. Last winter, every Tuesday, Thursday, they never missed one, one night out there for those kids. Wow. Amazing, amazing couple. So we like to partner with people like that. Those of us that sort of pay attention, we think pay attention to what's happening in the world, uh, you, these, these are uh, daunting issues, but you seem to have found a way to have, to do something locally that has an impact somewhere else. It, not that it takes work, but it's not complicated, is it? It's, it really isn't that complicated. No, it's not, it's not. 
and it's been, I think the people that shop with us at Waterfresh, um, they understand that their money's going to something, and I think that makes a difference. That makes a difference to them, that they can come in and buy a gift for a friend, but then know that that money is being used for something greater. I think that makes, that makes a tremendous difference to our customers. Tell, talk, talk, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the water, water fresh ownership because they, you know, it, it's a pretty fascinating place in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the, my experience with them is that there are people that have a greater sense of awareness of what's happening around them. Mm -hmm. For them, it's very important that they produce high quality nutritional food. Mm -hmm. And so it was a perfect fit for us to come in trying to help people around the world that are in need. For them, they thought, we're like family, you know, we think we're, we're thinking the same way that we really want to help others, that we want our business to be something more than just a business to really impact and help people. What are the, give us a, a, a description or, or at least a, an overview of the products that are, that are available. Oh, well it changes all the time. Yeah, so yeah. we have, um, we've had these very sweet mugs and it's a, it's a cup of, they're pottery, they're made in the United States, and it says a cup of love and it will have a little heart, and a cup of hope, and a cup of courage, and a cup of joy, and we got them because we just thought that's, that's what we want. We want our products to have a message. We want to let people know that they are valuable, that they can make a difference, and um, not too long after we, we had them, they, they became one of Oprah's greatest gifts and so the company oh. just yeah so it's it's amazing what can what happens you know with with these small little businesses um, but so things like that we have giving keys giving keys are made in Los Angeles and what they do is they employ um, people transitioning out of homelessness so they have their keys and on each key it's an old key they engrave a word so say hope when I buy the key I know that the mission for me is to give my key away to someone who needs hope. And then I go to their website and write the story, why I gave my key away. So their website is tremendous stories of people helping others. So the, the giving keys, the words are courage, strength, believe, hope, um, those kinds of things. Who thinks of this stuff? It's, it's amazing. Said, it's I mean, amazing it, what people do. It, it, it really is. Now you brought the, the you brought your uh, touch, if you allow me to use that word, to um, an area in New Jersey. Was it New Jersey or or uh, oh Staten? Staten Island? Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. So Staten Island, um, when the hurricane hit, we wanted to we wanted to help. That's that's what we're here to do, um, and so we brought down clothing and tons and tons of food. And when we got down there, I realized that. All the things that I had learned in Africa and other parts of the world doing missions work were needed there because I had seen this before. We had <laughs> seen this before and we were able to help them because they thought, you know, they said, can you bring some things back for us? We're not going to need them. It's not going to be like this. And in my heart, I knew it was going to be like that for a long time. And so we made subsequent trips down there. And one of them said, you, you knew. How did you know this was going to be so long? It was going to take us so long to get the help we needed. But it was because we had seen it before. I think it's still going on, actually. They, I think there still needs. Yes, yes. What did you, what did you uh, gather to bring down there? Oh, my and gosh. And how did you do it? Well, you just put the word out. Hopkinton is one of the most amazing communities to live in, in terms of the generosity of the people and the hearts of the people. So we had, we actually have pictures. We had a truck that was so full, you could barely get the doors shut. And we had some high school kids, some moms that came down with us, gave it, gave it all away, and then took, what happened was um, for Staten Island, the hard part of that, the good thing is that people help you. The bad thing is that you can end up with a lot of things that you don't need. So people would donate things to them, but they were, they were like stiletto heels and shorts and things like that. So they had no way to get rid of. Literally, it was a mound, you know, as tall as a person, full of things they didn't need. So the, another way we helped them was to just take that whole thing away for them load the truck back up with everything they didn't need and bring it back and donate it here. And you could do that. We did so do that. So you closed that circle. We did. 
Wow. Well, you, you, you can't possibly be doing all of this yourself. Do you have helping hands? We do. We're all volunteer. So, um, and I have five children, <laughs> so, ah, so it's, it's not uncommon to see some people watching a football game with purses tagging like crazy. Um, yes, yeah, so we do. We have, if you know, we need help, then we just send out a note, you know, is there anyone that can help us um, tag or do that, this or that, or, um, you know, some colleges have fair trade days, and so we go up and we talk and we sell our products there and help um, educate the College kids are very interested in the world, the global perspective of things. So it's great to be around them and see their their hunger and their passion to help to help others around the world. Uh, the the um, it's easy to get frustrated when when you see groups of people that that focus on issues that uh, you personally might think is a waste of energy. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of that, that happens, I think, a lot in, in um, politics and around community issues. Mm -hmm. Maybe big to a small group, but uh, really it involves a lot of energy and a lot of drain. How, how, can, how can we help? How can those of us who are interested in your work help you to sort of uh, spread the message? Uh, because the opportunity is huge, the, the, yeah. the need is, is huge, uh, and you can really have an impact. Uh, not just here, but other places. If you, if you apply some of this energy, mm -hmm. uh, which we could argue is either in the right direction or not, but uh, how can we? How can people help? Well, they can help in a number of ways. They can they can come down and shop at Number One okay. Water Fresh. They can they can also um, you know it's a it's a great business model. I would have no problem helping someone get started doing the same thing somewhere else. I mean, I think that's, that's, how, I, that's how I received this. That's how I got this. Um, I would have no, no trouble whatsoever. We also have our looking into um, our websites almost ready to come online, and we'll be having a section for stores that would like to have us in their stores, not to the ah, scope that ah, we are in ah, Waterfresh, because ah. we're in Waterfresh. If you've been in Waterfresh, we're all over Waterfresh. So we're on top of the shelves. We're in the corners. When we started, um, Jeff and Donna and Phil wanted us to be, they wanted their store to be like a treasure hunt. So when people are looking for produce, they look up and they see something from Turkey. They're looking for pasta and they look up and there's something, there's something from South Africa. So they wanted the store to have that feel to it that you never know what, what's gonna be there when you look up in the store. So there are different stores that have, you know, talked to us a little bit about having a table having you know a little section of a Lima's purse things in their store and it would be the same thing they would pass us through like the Tadaros and Jeff they would pass us through um, at the end of the month write a check expansion talk a little because you, you've, you've now entered into a whole nother area of expansion it what is. Did, what's it look like I, I hate this question but what's it look like five years from now five years from now Lord knows right who knows Yes, who knows that we would make that we would make a difference, that we would change lives. And in order to do that, the business itself would be um, the business would be strong and growing and in other places. So we needed to learn. We came at this at you know not understanding retail, not knowing retail. So the past three and a half years, we've really learned and been able to get traction and say, okay. This is how this is done. This is what really works at Waterfresh. This, we could do other places. We could do in little pieces, in little shops around the world. Um, I think that's because we, we love relationship. So for us, being able to be in a store where we can come and go and do different things during the day, I don't need to be at Waterfresh, is a tremendous, tremendous oh, yeah. asset oh. to me. Oh. I, I mean, I go in there. You know, 5.30 in the morning, straighten things up. They call me if there's an issue. I stop down once during the day, but I have my day to investigate and to help and to look for people that need help. So it's incredibly freeing to be able to be in another business location without need, need, me needing to be physically there. Relationships? Relationships are so important. Partnering, the Partnering. right people. Right, with the same heart, 
And that's what we look, when we're looking to give our money away, that's the same thing we're looking for. We're looking for small so that the money's not lost. We try to give money per project as opposed to just giving blank checks. We like to make sure that it's a water well. You know, um, Tim Tebow's mom and dad have an orphanage in the Philippines and they do the same thing we do. They take not a cent for themselves. So we're always looking for people like that that are helping others, but their heart is just to give. They sell products? No, they don't. They have an orphanage but they take no money. His mom and dad take no money for the orphanage. 100%, 100% of the money you give to that orphanage goes to the kids in that orphanage. Nobody takes it, there's no administrative costs. Well, you know, we're uh, sitting in the, uh, the town that hosts the start of the marathon, and yes. we've come to understand in the last few years that people like uh, Wesley Career, who won in, uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, who's now a member of the Kenyan Parliament? Is that, that that's this is that's his passion. I mean, yes. he's driven by the same kind of motives that you are. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's fascinating, and as I said when we started, it's tough to cover this uh, this uh, subject in the in in 30 minutes. But I'd like to thank you, Kathy, for taking the time to to uh, sit with us. Those of us that are involved in HCAM are uh, constantly amazed at the the quality uh, of the people uh, in, in Hopkinton as you are, uh, the creativity that they express, uh, and, and what they've been able to do with, uh, with not only their education background, but, but driven by their own in individual passion. So thanks for taking the time to be oh, with us. That was my pleasure, thank you. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop, and two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth.